In this video, I will show you where to do street photography in Lisbon. We will cover locations, camera gear, and how to get the most out of your visit. Finally, a thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring, but more on that later on. There are six reasons why I recommend Lisbon for street photography. First of all, it's the location. You can get here from almost anywhere in the world without much hassle. Secondly, it's the weather. I visited in February and had a mix of sun, fog and rain. However, 60% of my time here was sunny and warm enough to wear shorts. The third reason is the huge selection of things to shoot. If you like characters, Lisbon is for you. If you like tight streets full of old buildings, they are all here. If you like open spaces with modern architecture, that's here too. Whether you love colour or prefer black and white, Lisbon has you covered. The fourth reason is that English is widely spoken and this just makes day-to-day -day life a little bit easier. The fifth reason is that Lisbon is very safe. Matter of fact, it has frequently been voted as one of the safest cities in Europe. Finally, the attitude towards photographers is the most relaxed that I've come across on the continent. Of course, common sense still applies. However, in general, people here were very open and very welcoming. If uh, you're the type of person that walks around like a zombie looking at their phone, then you're definitely in for a few twisted ankles here, so don't do it. <laughs> In my opinion, you only need three lenses here, a 28mm, a 50mm and a 135mm. After four weeks here, I am yet to face a situation where I felt like I needed something outside of this range. The 28mm will be your establishing lens and capture the big open spaces as well as covering the tight streets. The 50mm will be your main lens that you will use most of the time and honestly it's the lens that I feel fits the best with the city. You will use it for subjects, reflections, architecture and general photos around the town. The 135mm will be used for all of the long narrow streets and for getting the intricate details within the scene. Let's start in Alfama, which is one of Lisbon's oldest and most characterful districts. It is incredibly photogenic with lots of character, amazing architecture and of course the classic trams passing through all of the tight streets. This area is like a maze, so once you've done with the main spots, don't be shy and take one of the many alleyways and see where they take you. while in Alfama also walk up to Graca. Graca is a neighbouring area that has much of the Alfama charm but it's a little bit more spaced out. I also found that there are less tourists here and mostly locals, therefore making it great for people watching and just seeing the day-to-day -day life. Baixa is the very centre of town. It is touristy, it is busy, however it's full of photo opportunities. As well as the long narrow streets and the sweeping bends, this is a reflection heaven. When the sun is out, you'll be greeted with incredible light flooding the streets and creating small pockets where you can camp out and wait for the perfect subject. Don't forget to explore the Parque do Comercio, which is the main giant square right by the river. Early in the morning, you will get some amazing light and if you're lucky, some haze or fog over the river too.
Next to Baisha, you will find the Chiado and Biro Alto. Chiado is busy but has many quieter back streets. My suggestion is starting at one end and zigzagging across this whole district. There are many hills and straight roads, so be sure to bring a longer lens if you have one. From Chiado, you will enter Biro Alto. This is a rather unique neighborhood with Thai streets and old buildings. It's easy to navigate as all the streets are divided into blocks. So as before, just make sure to zigzag your way from one end to the other and you will cover it all. Once you've made your way through Bairo Alto, you'll end up in Principe Real. Now, not as many tourists venture this far out, so you'll definitely see more locals and a more chilled atmosphere. This is another great people watching location, especially in the park. Finally, if you walk to the river facing side of the park, you will have a long, narrow road going down the hill with the bridge in the background. A very classic Lisbon shot, so great for a telephoto lens. A little further out are two great neighbourhoods of Sao Paulo and Sao Bento. Sao Paulo is the closest one to Chiado, with the standout spot being the Elevado da Bica. Although you can hop on the tram, I do suggest walking the route both ways as this is a great spot for taking photos. Once you're done, don't forget all the small streets either side of the tram line that need to be explored. From here you can walk up to Sao Bento, a small yet picturesque neighbourhood that is definitely worth exploring. Once you're done you can simply walk all the way back to Chiado or even back to Graca to complete this city loop. One of my favourite photo walks in Lisbon is from Alfama to Belém. On the way there you will walk through the city and on the way back you will walk along the river. In total you're looking at around 11 miles however I will dedicate a whole day to this as there is so much to see and do. Starting from Alfama you will walk through Baixa, through Sao Paulo before eventually arriving in Pampula. From then you will walk towards Alcantara and that will lead you nicely to the LX factory where you can get some lunch and have a beer. Once your break is over you can keep on going straight along the main road until you reach Belém. Along this route there are plenty of museums and galleries to enjoy so if you're visiting in the summer and the daylight is on your side I do highly recommend looking inside. From here keep going until you reach Belem Tower. Now please note to get to Belem Tower you would need to cross the motorway and the train tracks. There are a few bridges along the way in Belem so you'll have no issues doing that.
from Belem Tower, start walking back towards the city along the river and keep going until you reach the mat. The mat is a museum, however, the highlight for me is the architecture and you can honestly spend hours here looking for photo opportunities. I found photos using all of the three lenses I mentioned earlier, so be sure to bring all of them with you. Once you're done, keep walking towards the bridge. Actually, the area under the bridge is also great for photos. From here, just keep following the river all the way until you end up back in Baisha. Tram 28 is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Lisbon, however it's for good reason. The classic tram will take you from most of the locations mentioned earlier and honestly it's an experience that is worth having. I suggest getting up as early as possible and catching the tram before 8am, that way it will be quiet and you won't have to wait too long. Grab the tram from Martin Moniz and take it one way all the way to the end of the line. Now do be careful with your camera out of the window though, it really does get tight in some points. Once you get to the end, I highly suggest walking the tram route back. Honestly, as fun as the tram was, I personally preferred walking the route because you just had more time to observe and take all of different neighborhoods in. Not to mention it's very easy to follow, just look up the tram route on your maps and follow that route. Alright, that's all from me. I do hope you found this video useful and it has either helped you plan your trip or inspired you to come and visit. Now, this is not the full Lisbon guide. That will be out on my travel channel soon, so make sure to subscribe not to miss out. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. It's been emotional and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Now it's time for a quick pause to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is my go-to on-one platform for managing my portfolio, blog, and online store. With Squarespace, I can better optimize my website so that it comes up in search and I get more eyeballs on my work. The best bit is that I can actively manage it from anywhere in the world using any device. Whether you're just starting out or already have an established business, Squarespace is a great choice. If this is something that interests you, click on the link below for a free trial and then 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to you for watching this bit of the video and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring.